Hi everyone, I'm Lauren Dockett from Psychotherapy Networker and with me today is Judith Mass. Welcome Judith. Thank you. Judith is a therapist and she is a speaker and a trainer and the co-author of Beyond a Shadow of a Diet and Diet Survivor's Handbook. She penned a piece for a recent issue of the magazine, this one right here, ironically with a bagel on the cover, um, um, on the health at every size approach to eating and body image issues, which is also called Haze. Judith, quickly explain to us what the Haze approach is. Sure, I'd be glad to. Um, health at every size looks at health, emotional and physical health, is much broader than a number on the scale. Given the incredible um, failure rate of diets and the impact of weight stigma, Health at Every Size is interested in helping people support their bodies um, by, with positive, sustainable behaviors. So, for example, when it comes to eating, uh, one of the principles supports people in staying connected to cues for hunger and satiation and eating based on their individual nutritional needs, choosing from a wide variety of foods. When it comes to physical activity, um, Hayes supports people in finding ways to move their body based on their abilities, their interests, pleasure and movement as opposed to punishment. And health at every size is also concerned that people have access to nutritional food and to safe, sp safe spaces to go out and play. So we want to stop assuming that we can tell a person's health status based on body size. Mm -hmm. There are people at higher weights who are healthy and unhealthy, just as there are people at lower weights who are healthy and unhealthy. Um, health is a continuum, right? And um, health at every size wants to make sure that people of all body sizes have access um, to treatments and strategies that will improve their health. It's not saying every single person can be healthy. We know that's not true. Um, on a social justice level, we are interested in respect for all bodies. Okay. So the question from therapists about Hayes, and we've certainly heard it at the magazine, is we know fat shaming is bad. We've gotten that far, right? Um, but isn't there still something unethical about approach like Hayes? Um, because we're not going to be encouraging or helping overweight clients to slim down. So how do you respond to that? Okay, that's a good question. And what I hear is, well, so, Lauren, I want to start by commenting that diet culture and fat shaming is woven into that question. Mm -hmm. it, it assumes that somebody is at the body size they're not meant to be, mm -hmm. that their body is wrong or bad and it's unhealthy. Um, and it also assumes that there's a reliable way, an evidence-based way to help people change their body size. But after decades of research, there is not a single approach or plan out there that has long-term research. Everything works in the short term, but not over time. That's when we see weight regain. And in fact, upwards of 95% of people will regain the weight and one third to two thirds end up higher than their pre-diet weight. Mm. So I'm gonna reverse the question and ask how is it ethical for us to prescribe something that doesn't work. And, you know, dieting is not innocuous. Um, like I said, it's one, dieting for weight loss is one of the strongest predictors of weight gain. But we also know that people who diet are at higher risk for eating disorders. People who yo-yo diet actually have worse health outcomes. Um, for example, higher rates of cardiovascular disease. It interferes with metabolism. It can permanently lower metabolism. It interferes with um, hormones for hunger and fullness. And then beyond that, um, I have to think about the shame people feel that their body is considered not okay, they do what they're supposed to do, it doesn't work over time, but because it works in the short run, they assume it's their fault, their failure. And that shame is insidious, and it affects, um, it affects depression, it impacts anxiety. So health and exercise really offers an ethical approach to help people incorporate positive behaviors. If they lose weight as a side effect, that's fine. We're not against weight loss per se, mm -hmm. just um, incorporating we're, what we're against is prescribing something that um, doesn't uphold our principle of first do no harm. So this, this is great because it leads me to my um, last question, which is, what are some basic techniques a therapist can use, you talked about shame, to help a client deal with weight stigma? Okay, um, so that question I have to answer on multiple levels because 
as a therapist, we have all been raised in diet culture mm -hmm. and we've internalized our own beliefs about fat and thin. And so we have to deal with our own fat phobia and weight, you know, weight stigma first. And so uh, that's why I love doing my trainings. I always make sure to incorporate some awareness for therapists um, around that. As we become more aware of that and become more weight neutral and weight inclusive, then we can help our clients. When somebody comes to me who's already familiar with health at every size and they're looking at weight stigma, it might mean helping them set boundaries with family who are still um, pressuring them to lose weight or making fat shaming comments. It might mean when they go to the doctor, figuring out how to advocate for themselves. So often our higher weight clients are told to lose weight, um, to treat illnesses, and they're not getting the same information a client at a lower weight would get about ways to improve their health. So, so asking the doctor, what would you have a client, you know, somebody who was lower weight had this um, same issue, what would you prescribe them? That's the treatment I want. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of clients are going to come saying they want to lose weight, and I think then we have to start by hearing their stories and learning with them what, what messages were you given, you know, from your parents, from peers, from health professionals, and what have you tried? And as they go through their stories and we hear the diet failure, gently offering psychoeducational, uh, psych psychoeducational alternatives, and I guess I just want to finish by saying, because we're all part of this diet culture, that we all, both in our personal and professional lives, can be part of shifting things to a more weight-inclusive um, world. And that that and it can be anything from stopping a diet conversation at work with colleagues, or at least not participating in them, mm -hmm. to looking at policies that impact people in higher weight bodies and other marginalized bodies. So health at every size looks at both individual and the big picture.